All right, we are on the home stretch of algebra for the brain. Uh, and we're going to finish up today with solving rational equations. And this is something you will definitely use uh, in Algebra 2 and in Calculus. So just a very basic equation to start. So, you know, we move the 7 over to the other side by doing the inverse operation. So we get 3x to equal uh, 15, divide by 3, and x equals 5. Okay, and then in the next example, um, this is a rational equation. So whenever you have a rational equation, you need to make sure that you check the denominator. But if there's not a variable in the denominator, you're good to go. Okay, and um, there's actually multiple ways you could approach this problem. One would be the typical what you guys know as cross multiply. Okay, but 39 times 8 is going to give us a fairly large number. Uh, another way you can approach this problem is by looking at the denominator, 13 to 39, that's just times 3. Okay, so that's pretty quick. So this is just times 3. So we get um, 8 times 3 equals x plus 2. So we get x equal 22. And then the other way to do the problem uh, is to multiply the entire uh, equation by the LCD, which in this case would be 39 on both sides. So you'll notice that this cancels and you're left with a 3, which is why you have 8 times 3. And this cancels and you have nothing left over, which is why you have an x plus 2. Okay, I'm going to do one more example, uh, cross multiplying, and then I'm actually going to stick to the multiplying by the LCD because that comes in... Um, because much more handy farther down the road. Okay. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is check what x cannot equal, which means you have to see if there's a variable in the denominator. Um, x cannot equal. If there, again, if there's not a variable in the denominator, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so if we look at our example, we do have a variable in the denominator, there's an x. So remember to find the domain restrictions, you set that equal to zero, and that's what x cannot be. So x cannot equal negative four. Okay. Then in this example, uh, we are going to go ahead and cross multiply. Okay. And then you solve for the variable. Remember, it doesn't have to be x. And then, of course, the all-important check when you're done. So check to make sure that it's not an extraneous solution. Um, and just check to make sure that it works. Okay. All right. So we already did step one. So now we're going to go ahead and do step two. And we're going to cross multiply. So we get um, six times two equals x times x plus 4. Okay, now remember that, um, so the first thing we need to do is make sure we get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to distribute. So we get x squared plus 4x. And if you have a quadratic, you're going to want to set it equal to 0. How do I know that it's a quadratic? Uh, it's because that this is squared. So 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 12. And then we factor, so x plus 6 times x minus 2. And we can do the quick factoring since a is 1. And then you set each one of those equal to 0. And we get x to equal negative 6 and 2. So when you're done, go ahead and check to make sure it's not an extraneous solution, which it's not. So that would be our final answer. Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to do one doing it the other way, and then we're going to go ahead and go on to the next page. So let's take a look at example A. So the way we just did it, you would go ahead and cross multiply. The way I'm going to focus on with you guys, though, is finding the LCD first. So finding the LCD. 
So you just look at the denominator and basically you just take both of these. So three and then y minus two. And then once you have the LCD, find out what the variable cannot equal. So y minus two cannot equal zero. So y can't equal two. Okay, and then we're gonna multiply both sides by the LCD. Okay, and then look to see what cancels. So this cancels on this side and you're left with three times five. And this cancels on the right side, so you're left with y times y minus two. If you cross multiply, notice you would have gotten the same exact thing. Five times three, y times y minus two. Now, just remember that the only time we can cross multiply is when you have one fraction equaling one fraction. So on the next page, we're not gonna have that. So you actually cannot cross multiply in the next examples. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of the parentheses. So we have 15 equals y squared minus 2y. And remember that if you have a quadratic, it has to be set equal to zero. So we're gonna subtract the 15 from both sides. Okay. And then since a is one, we can do the quick, fa two, quick factoring of what two numbers multiply to negative 15 and add to negative two. So y minus five, y plus three. And then anything with a variable must be set equal to zero. So we get y to equal negative three and five. And then of course, check to make sure it's not an extraneous solution, which it's not. And then if you want to, I mean, not if you want to, but you should, plug each number back in and make sure they actually work. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do it. We get next page. So this is where we're going to um, continue to use the way that I just showed you on the last example. Notice that we cannot cross multiply on these due to the fact that it's not a fraction equaling a fraction. So the first thing you do in these examples is you find the LCD. So corresponding with this problem, uh, the LCD between five, two, and four would be 20, okay? Then the next step is check what the variable can't equal. So basically check domain restrictions. And you can do that by just looking at the LCD. So if you do not have a variable in the denominator, remember you don't have to worry about domain restrictions. So we don't have to worry about a variable in the denominator, so we can skip step two in this example. Okay, step three is going to be multiply by the LCD. Make sure that you multiply both sides by the LCT or LCD, or I should say in this example, everything by the LCD. So we're gonna, sorry about that. We're gonna multiply this whole thing by 20. Now, some people, um, to help them out to figure out what is gonna be left over when you multiply. We'll actually like to put the LCD by everything. So uh, multiply this by 20, multiply this by 20, and multiply this by 20. Okay, so you don't need to do this step, but I'm just trying to show you guys where everything comes from. So multiply the first fraction by 20, the second one, and the last one. So like I said, you don't need to do that step. Uh, I just think it might help some of you. Visualize what's happening. All right, step four then is going to be to solve for the variable. So we have four uh, X equals 10 X minus five. So just solve X equals five, six. And then of course your final part is to check Make sure it's not an extraneous solution, but this problem we didn't have to worry about an extraneous solution since we didn't have a variable in the denominator. Okay. All right, let's go on to example two. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find that LCD. So the LCD uh, between two Y and four uh, is going to be four Y. Then step two is to check what the denominator can't equal, in other words, domain restrictions. 
Since there is a variable in the denominator, we do have to do this step this time. So y cannot equal zero. Okay. Step three then is to multiply by the LCD. Once again, uh, if you want to write it out each step, you can. Okay. And then um, when you do that, so basically one half times four y, what do you have to take this denominator to look like this? It basically what's left over. So you're gonna have um, one times two y equals three times four minus one times y. So basically whatever the denominator is missing out of the LCD is what you multiply by. So two y equals 12 minus y, three y equals 12, y equals four, check to make sure it's not an extraneous solution. So if that was a little um, tough for you to do without writing it out like we did uh, in this example, then just go ahead and write it out. Um, no problem with that, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and jump to the next example on the next page. So notice that this is um, does not have a denominator that we see. So if we don't see that, it's implied that it's 1. So the first thing we have to do is find the LCD. So in this case, it's going to be g minus 2. And then since there will be a variable in the denominator, we have to find the domain restrictions. So g cannot equal So then we have to multiply everything by g minus 2. So once again, uh, if it helps you to write it out, like I did on the first example on the previous page, then write it out. Okay. And then go through and see what cancels the denominator. And you'll hopefully start noticing the pattern that whatever you have left over is what you just needed to multiply by in order to get the LCD in the first place. So what I mean by that is notice that the G minus two is canceled. So this denominator matches that denominator, so we didn't need to multiply by anything. Okay, same thing happens here. Okay, but then in this example, uh, nothing cancels with the denominator. Notice that this was just a 1, so how do I get 1 to look like g minus 2? You multiply it by g minus 2. So we have 2 times g minus 2. Okay. And then we go ahead and solve for the variable. You do not have a quadratic this time, so uh, it's just a basic algebraic equation. So we get negative g to equal negative 2, so g equals 2. And then we have to make sure that we check our answers. Okay, if you go and check, that's what g cannot equal. So the final answer for this one is actually no solutions. Okay, 2 was an extraneous solution. All right, last example. So we have to find the LCD. In order to do that, we take all the parts. So this is just over 1. So the LCD is going to be y squared. So set that equal to 0. That's what y cannot equal. And then we multiply by the LCD. So if you want to, write it out. And then go through to see if anything cancels. So this first term, nothing cancels. The second term, you're left with minus 1y. And then on the equal sign, you're left with 3. Just make sure that if you do do it this way, where you're like writing it everything out, and actually it doesn't matter which way you do it, but um, that you don't forget to do both sides of the equation. So sometimes people also like to write it on both sides to remember to... Um, to do that step, to multiply both sides by the LCD. 
All right, so since this is a quadratic, a quadratic needs to be set equal to zero, unless there's no linear term. Okay, and then um, we have to factor this, so negative six, negative one, so negative three and two. Uh, a is greater than one, so we have to do bottoms up. So we have y minus three divided by two, and y plus two divided by two. So bottoms up. Okay, and then just set each one equal to zero. So y equals three halves and negative one. And then check to make sure that there's not an extraneous solution, which there's not. So that would be my final answer. Okay, and then um, we're not gonna go through it, but example six, uh, just because it's a word problem, doesn't mean anything. You can just go ahead and cross multiply or you can multiply by the LCD to solve it. Okay, way to finish strong. Um, thanks for taking the time to listen to all these videos. Uh, I appreciate it greatly and I miss you guys. Um, and I'll be Zooming with you if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.